We, we have do. our guest. All right, great. Uh, it, it, Zach, I hope I get this right. Is it Frangillo? Is that how you say it? Frangillo. Frangillo. All right, awesome. Okay, so here's how I'm going to start. I'm going to fanboy out for a minute, okay? I've known about you okay. guys since the very beginning. I saw the HBO Real Sports feature on you guys. I think what you're doing is revolutionizing sports because you're making it fun in a different kind of way. It's not necessarily about the outcome. Yeah. Am I right when I say it's the Harlem Globetrotters meets baseball? So I, I would say yes and no. Um, yes, I would say we get that a lot. I would say we get that all the time. Um, it, and it's great, and it's an awesome compliment. And the reason being is the Harlem Globetrotters revolutionized basketball when they first began uh, or when they first became a team. Um, they were selling out Madison Square Garden. The NBA was asking them to come to their games and play before the NBA games just to get butts and seats. Um, but the one thing that they did um, or lack thereof and didn't do was they never changed. They never became anything new. Um, and their games were always scripted. You know, every single time the, the Globetrotters would win, besides one game in the Washington Generals history where they won one game on accident, <laughs> our games are entirely competitive, and I can't script hitting a fastball. As, as much as I wish I could script hitting a fastball, I just can't. Um, it would make my life a whole heck of a lot easier if I could. <laughs> uh, but no, our games are incredibly competitive. Both teams are here to win, and they want to win. Um, and, and then we just add the show on and the, the, that side of things uh, to make it a great fan experience as well. It's so much fun. Man, that's it really crazy. Is. Zach, how do you guys come up with some of the stunts? Is it something – I know you're the director or creator director for the band. Is it something you work on with the players? Do the yep. players come to you with ideas? Yep. Is this all just from your mastermind brain? <laughs> how do these stunts come from an idea in someone's brain to fruition on the mm -hmm. field? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So um, – Ideas are everything for us. So there's nobody in our organization from top down that is uh, is not allowed to give an idea. Um, we do have what's called our OTT group, which is myself, director of entertainment, um, our director of marketing, Kara Heater, our uh, marketing coordinator, uh, Savannah Alanese, and then our owner, Jesse Cole, and Yvonne Trezak, our director of creative content. We all come together and we have what are called buckets. And our buckets are, um, you know, different categories. Hold that he, thought, Zach. He did text me that he got back to the ballpark and just got internet back, which is why he was running late. So oh, give, okay. Give it a second, it'll lost. kick back in. Oh, it will kick back in. Well, they're, hopefully. they're actually in Indianapolis right now, and they postponed the game last night because there was the no air. power downtown. No, oh, I thought because of the air quality. Well, maybe, but they, I, I was going through their Twitter this morning, and I believe they had no – give me one second. I don't, I don't want to get Because a lot of games – I know uh, some of the area games um, – outside and were canceled because of yeah the there was no quality. power in the stadium or in wow. downtown indy last night interesting there is okay right, Zach, am i back yes right, yeah I'm you're back. back all right yes so yesterday we actually had to uh cancel our game we lost all power in in the city of indianapolis wow. it was crazy um, nuts so was it we weather had, related uh, it was weather related yep and then wow. we just got power back uh, a little bit ago and then we just got our internet back a little bit ago so we're good to go for tonight which is good um obviously we're still working out some of the kinks but anyway <laughs> back to back to the ideas um, we have what are called buckets and the buckets are anything from, you know, lip syncing or um, uh, using props. And then we come with just a bunch of ideas. And those ideas are over the top ideas, which is where OTT comes from. And we just create these moments that are super unique and special. And then from there, uh, it comes to my, my side of things and how do we execute it. And then that goes to Yvonne, who's our director of creative content. How are we going to capture this? And then that goes to our director of marketing on how are we going to share this with our fans? Which fan base should this go to? You know, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter are all very different people that are, are following us. So which market is going to enjoy this content the best? And right. that's how we kind of create these ideas and keep our, our ideas flowing. How so do, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, how, how do you guys recruit? players like i mean uh, it, yeah it, it, do you you obviously have to be able to bat you have to be able to throw the ball you have to mm -hmm. be able to catch you have to be able to do those mm -hmm. things but obviously it would help if you know how to dance sing rap <laughs> uh look decent yeah. dance and make a fool of yourself how do you guys <laughs> like really go about recruiting like that's kind of hard yeah 
No, you, you nailed it. The one thing that we always said is that this thing doesn't work if the baseball isn't incredible. Um, I, was, I was fortunate enough to, you know, we've played against the MLB PAA, which is the Players Alumni Association. Um, so we're playing against former big league talent. And the one thing that they continued to say was that the baseball is so good. Um, you know, they weren't expecting us to be that great. And then we come out there and dust them. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's, and it's exciting for us, but the baseball has to be good. And then when it comes to recruiting players, um, the big thing is, is that we're looking for someone that's called in our kind of guy, Tyler Gillum, our head coach, has talked about this from the beginning. We're not looking for the best baseball player in the world. We're not looking for just a, another dancer. We have to look for someone that is going to have both of those. And then also the name of our company is fans first entertainment. So someone that is going to embody that fans first mentality in the ability to truly make any moment special for our fans and create an experience for our fans that is unlike any other. Um, and so that, that comes with tryouts that comes with uh, rehearsals and trying new people in different spots and seeing the best way and the best people for, for our show. Now are both these guys, uh, college basketball, uh, college baseball players, minor league players. What's, what's yep. the, the average background? Yeah, so I would say a majority of them are uh, former professional independent ball players. Right. Um, a lot of our guys also came from our collegiate league. Uh, if you knew uh, before we started Banana Ball and before we started touring, we were part of the Coastal Plain League, which is uh, very similar to the Cape, if you're familiar with college oh, baseball. Yeah. Um, right. So just a summer league. Um, and then that grew, and then those guys, a couple of those guys continued on with us um, into their professional careers and, and stayed with us. Um, but then we also have former major league talent. You know, we have Bill, the Spaceman League, 76 years old, who's still <laughs> towing the slab for us and throwing for us. So um, it, it comes from a wide range of, of baseball talent. That might be the most perfect uh, marriage in sports history, Spaceman Lee and the Savannah Bananas. So you're, not in, a, you're not in a league, and you, you're called the Savannah mm-hmm. Bananas, so tell our viewers where, like, do you play the majority of your games in Savannah? I know you're on this tour across the country yeah. that has been wildly successful. In fact, you're coming to Akron, and both games have been sold out forever, much to my dismay, because I wanted to go and see you. And maybe if I can't go and watch, I'll let you know that I'm a former independent league minor leaguer. I pitch. I still play. <laughs> I'll get out there and throw the pill. I'll swing the bat. If you need an extra player for the Akron games, either one of them, I'm your dude. I'm your guy. I'll make sure to get you in contact with our coaches. Uh, I wish if I could recruit players, we'd have a lot more social media influencers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Yeah. I mean, when, I, yeah, mean um, when it, I, I, I should tell you, too, when I played in the independent league, it was during my years at ESPN. And... Mm-hmm. Um, the the St. Saint Paul Saints, which were kind of a like a like they're maybe one of the forefathers into what you're doing. But I mean, they obviously were professional baseball players that were signed to contracts, but they made the show fun. I mean, that's what it was all about going yeah. to a Saints game. And they found out that I was still pitching. So they they signed me and I actually pitched a couple of games for them. And then I pitched for um, nice. for a team in Long Beach in the in the California League of the Golden League um, after that. But um, I, I think the level of baseball, at least from what I've been able to tell from these clips, mm-hmm. these guys can ball. They're not, you know, they're ball players. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, absolutely. You know, again, it, it doesn't work if the baseball isn't good. You know, it takes a real level of talent for someone to, you know, make a routine play, let alone do it and make a backflip catch, you know, yeah. or do a catch <laughs> behind the back. Like that's uh, things that are happening. Like this catch right there that you're seeing right there is just a behind the back. And that's just like, a normal thing for these guys, which is, you know, they don't practice like every other team. We're not any other team. So why would we practice like every other team? So, (laughs) you know, when it comes to it, these guys are practicing their trick plays. We have a stat where it's trick plays per game. And then the trick play leader, Ryan Cox is our shortstop. He's one of the most insane shortstops and things that I've seen him do with a glove and, and a routine play is unbelievable between the legs behind the back, you know, it's it's unbelievable what some of these guys can do, and and that comes with you know the level of talent that they have naturally moving into banana ball. You're selling out games everywhere, aren't you? Yeah, we are completely sold out for for this season. We have a waiting list up of over seven hundred fifty thousand people for Good next for you, year's man. tour. Good um, for you guys. Yeah, we're that's we're, inc- that's we're awesome. very proud. Is yeah, that- we're really proud of of what this is and what it's become, and yeah. Zach, I got I got two questions for you, real quick, Jeez. kind of quick hitters. Okay. You guys mm-hmm. have you know former minor leaguers, former pro guys. If you could take one player currently playing in Major League Baseball to give him a tryout 
for the bananas. Who do you think in the majors would make a good banana? Uh, I got two answers for you. Okay. Uh, actually, I have three. So first off, Zach Granke, just because I want to let him loose on his on his <laughs> whatever he is. Mm. Um, uh, a former major leaguer, Brock Holt. Is I think yep. he embodies what fans first is, um, and then there's one other. He pitches uh, Brandon Phillips. Okay, uh, yeah, just I think those guys embody what it means to be uh, fans first, and they understand what it means to be a fans first player. And then they also have are always having fun. Like you never saw Brock Holt without a smile on his face when he was on the ball field. And I think that those guys would translate into uh, banana ballers pretty well. And secondly. I'm the ideas guy here for UCSS. My guys in the back, yeah. they tell me some are good. They tell me, hey, these are terrible. And we just never <laughs> bring them to air. So I'm curious as, as the ideas guy for the bananas, what's an idea that never came to fruition that you might be able to share with us that uh, just got kind of left on the scrap heap? Because some of the ones y'all pulled off oh, man. are unbelievable. So I got to imagine some of the ones that didn't make it yeah. that top level are pretty chaotic and crazy in a good way too. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I, I – I get asked this question a lot and it always changes because there's some ideas that are more fresh in my mind. Um, but the idea of still having someone skydive in like our starting lineup skydive into their positions is still on the <laughs> top of crazy. my list. Uh, uh, I'll do that. I haven't gotten the green. He, he's yeah. not See, lying. I, I've gotten the green. I've gotten the green light from our entire team. And now I'm just waiting for the green light from everybody else. I'm like, hey, guys, we're good to go. Let's do it. I yeah, have a legal, company legal that might have a problem like, We're that. ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. They're not too thrilled. They're not too thrilled, but that is I, I'm, awesome. I'm convinced that that'll happen. That'll what's happen. The, um, what's the biggest stadium that you filled? What's your biggest crowd, single crowd so far? It'll actually be tonight. It was supposed to be last night, but it'll now be tonight uh, here in India with uh, 12,000. Wow. That's incredible. Incredible. I believe I believe we have fourteen thousand tickets out for tonight. How Hold many on. games have you played this year? Uh, this is game fifty three of ninety. Wow! Okay. So you playing ninety you, games? You're probably you're probably outdrawing. Yeah. You're definitely outdrawing the Oakland A's. Hell, <laughs> I mean you may be you, you may <laughs> be outdrawing the Guardians. My, my I better beat. not make fun of the A's. No. Um, but <laughs> look, you're, Zach, you're clearly on to something. Um, thanks for, as a, as a baseball purist, a guy who's played it my entire life and take the game very seriously. I, when I first heard of this, I thought, oh God, don't, don't gimmick up the game. You have improved yeah. the game. You've made it fun. I love your umpires, by the way. Where do you get these dancing umpires from? <laughs> So it's the same one. I found him on Ellen, actually. It's really funny. I literally <laughs> typed into Google. I typed into Google dancing umpire, and then an Ellen clip came up, and I said, yeah, I got to find that guy. And then it took a quick Facebook search of his name, and he's pretty uh, pretty recognizable with his beard and being short and, and, and who he is. So he was pretty easy to find. We had a call with him. Jesse and I had a call with him, and <laughs> it was a it was a no-brainer fit. <laughs> is he, does he um, every he's amazing. game? Does he travel with you guys? Is he he part does. Of the, okay. yep. He travels full time. Yep, he travels full time. And no, no. I, I want to actually get back to something that you said about you know being a baseball traditionalist and a purist. Yeah. Um, I, I'm the same way. I was. I'm a traditionalist. I love the game of baseball. I grew up playing it. I played in college. Um, like it was very. It's a very big part of my life. But the one thing that I've learned with this whole process and, and being here is that they don't have to be. They don't have to be the same thing, right? Sure. You don't have to have one or the other. You can have both. They can be coexisting. Um, you know, banana ball and baseball don't have to – it doesn't have to be one or the other, which is really unique. And I, I think I people get that. hung up on, like, which one's better. Like, yeah. which one's better. It doesn't need to be which one's better. No, it's, I, I this is for a different crowd. And, and the thing of it is – and this is what reminded me of it as I was seeing all these clips. I just remember thinking, I see clips on my feed all day long. And some of them are, you know, Jose yeah. Ramirez slide into home plate, which is, a, mm -hmm. you know, a supremely athletic and gifted player making an unbelievable right. play in a crazy moment. And I can appreciate that. But I don't open that clip and laugh hysterically. When I open the right. banana clips, I'm still able to appreciate the baseball and the skill, but I'm laughing every time I open your clip. I also host a 5 o'clock show at – NBC here in Cleveland, and I work you guys into that show all the time. I'm always seeing clips on social media, and now my producer is a fan. My executive producer is a fan. My executive producer somehow got tickets, so she's going to one of the games <laughs> in Akron. My producer and I are like, how did you get tickets and we don't have tickets? 
But we're all fans now. And by the way, they're both women who aren't baseball fans. And that's the beauty right. of this. You're using yeah. baseball as the conduit, but you're bringing fans from outside of the traditional baseball circle yeah. into the sport, and no one can be upset about that. Yeah. No, we, we pride ourselves on that alone. One of the best compliments I ever got was uh, was from a fan that just said, you guys had something for literally everybody. Um, this was after a Savannah game, and you know we travel with the majority of our cast, but not all the time. But we had our Banana Splits, which is a dance group of that is comprised from eight to eleven year olds, and then we had our Banana Nanas, who are a dance group from our uh, that are sixty five and up. So like from <laughs> from every age range, you you know your your little sister can come and have fun at the game and they can find a character to latch onto. We have a yeah. bananas princess. We have our bananas pet band. Like there is something at our games for everybody and that's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. It's really a study in successful marketing. I think that's the true story here. Anthony, our yeah. producer today, has a question for you. Anthony, what do you got? Hey, Zach, so enough about baseball. Let's get into the real nitty-gritty. You yeah. used to work for the Knights, and I'm a huge Golden Knights fan. <laughs> what what was your favorite moment? What was your favorite moment from working with them? And then how excited were you that they won this year? Yeah, I was I was ecstatic when they won. It was it was a pretty cool moment. And they actually uh, someone from the organization, I won't name names, but someone from the organization actually sent me a uh, one of the uh, hats and shirts that they got on the nice. ice uh, that, that night, which was pretty cool just to know that it made it a little bit of an impact. Um, I would say my favorite moment. So um, the, the Vegas Golden Knights have the pregame show every night where the bad guy comes out and faces the night uh, every single night. Um, and I was actually the bad guy for the first four years of that organization, uh, <laughs> meaning that I got to be a part of the Stanley Cup finals year one. And, um, I was the uh, the bad guy in the Stanley Cup Finals, uh, the guy that came down from the ceiling uh, and got to face the night for that, and then all of the games leading up to that, you know, the Western Conference where a guy went up to the ceiling. That was me. And so I would say, you know, hanging there, dangling, lifeless uh, on, a, on a cable uh, in a Stanley Cup Final game, hearing 18-plus thousand people boo you was probably one of my favorite <laughs> moments of, so of, awesome. of my time there. That's yeah. pretty cool. And that, that first year in general was was that first year in general was I mean, it, it was a Disney movie basically, uh, and we got to live it every day, which was pretty special. You know, I love how the plan was. I think the plan was to make the Cup Finals in a couple of years, and then to win it in like yep. six, maybe make the make the playoffs in three, and win it in six or whatever. Correct. Whatever the plan playoffs was. Playoffs in three, Cup in six, and and it ends up, uh, you know, finals in one. Um, champions in five it is it's, it's a model organization yeah. for how you should start a sports team in a city zach yeah. thanks a lot um if you need a, a soft throwing righty that's got a, an array of pitches i'll uh, throw anything at any point in the count uh and it can still put the bat on the ball you let me know i'll be there in about five minutes notice so i'm here <laughs> you gotta do i'll make guy. sure to bring it up to our coaches <laughs> let them know baby awesome. let them know Tell them to Google my uh, my baseball reference page. <laughs> pretty you damn impressive. <laughs> it's pretty damn impressive. All right, thanks, Zach. Great, Zach, man. We appreciate you, man. Thanks, appreciate guys. It. Thanks a lot. Uh, Talk soon, guys. Bye. It is it is a major success story for marketing. I'm pissed off. I can't go now. Yeah, I'm genuinely listen, upset that I it's can't an go. Event. Yeah. I mean, they sold out both nights in Akron. Yeah. And they've been sold out for months. We tried to get tickets three months ago. I'm saying. And, and I said, I, I told our uh, executive producer, I said, let's do a, a group trip. You know, a bunch of us from work, we'll go, we'll get tickets. She says, yeah, it's a great idea. She went on the website. She's like, it's showing that both games are sold out. Is that possible? And I'm like, no, that's got to be a mistake. Mm -hmm. It's not a mistake. I, I, I'm a, I really want to go. I want to really see wanna them go. play bigger venues. Yeah. So right now they're playing triple, double A, triple A stadiums, which tend to be in the 12 to 15,000 range. This year. I want to see them play major league stadiums. I'm sure major league Baseball won't let that happen, but um, there are venues that are bigger than twelve and fifteen thousand that, that could hold them. Hell, go out to where the College World Series is played. And, Omaha, and play there. Place. I mean, yeah. that, you know what? You know what would be smart is if Major League Baseball they got minor league teams. They should get a minor league team like this. It's fun, and man. then get it, and, and you could play it in the stadiums, and then you know do something in the seventh inning or something, and bring them out and do something really quickly. Because I think this is this is. Another wave of different ways oh, you I can like spread that. the game. Like seventh inning stretch. stretch and then uh, you get deep. Like the Cavs at yeah. halftime, they yeah. have a little show. Yeah, yeah. It'd be really hard because you only have two minutes. You got two minutes. But well, I, I'm sure Major League Baseball could work with them. Can't y'all work with us a little bit? I mean, 
they're the, crazy if they don't figure out a way to tap into it because it's wildly successful. Because I watch this. There's probably people that are a fan of that baseball that are not watching his traditional co- baseball games. No, a, a ton of their fans. So they're very popular with women. And a lot of their fan base don't consider themselves diehard baseball fans. But the other thing we didn't get to touch on in, in this interview, but was talked about in the real sports piece, the games have a time limit. Mm. I believe it's 90 minutes or, or two, two hours. hours. I think it's two hours. So it's, it's at two hours, the game's over. It's like soccer. It starts yeah, at 7 it o'clock. It and, ends and at how many o'clock. innings can you play? And at 9 o'clock, who's, who's on top? And that's then the game's decided. And I think that's good because – Obviously, Major League Baseball has made a huge effort to cut the time of their yep, games. Yep. You want to know that your entertainment block is going to be a, a defined yeah. period of time. You can't go if, like these extra inning games that go four hours. Yeah. It's, it's not conducive to uh, to family entertainment.